Immortality has long fascinated us humans. Numerous people have searched for the secret of living forever for centuries. But it seems like we've been beaten to it by our animal friends. To an extent, at least. Today, we will be looking at 10 animals that can live after death. Make sure you stay tuned for number one, as this creature just might be immortal. Number 10. Cockroaches. It shouldn't come as a surprise that these tiny little bugs would make this list. Cockroaches are infamous for their tenacity, and are often cited as the most likely survivors of a nuclear war. Some even claim they can live without their heads. Well, surprise, surprise, they can live without their heads. In fact, they can go on living for two weeks. To understand how these bugs can survive decapitation, first we must understand how we fragile humans couldn't. First of all, humans bleed, and when a man's head comes off, he bleeds a lot. Cockroaches don't have that problem, though. They have an open circulatory system, which translates to little to no blood pressure. So if their head pops off, the wound just closes naturally due to clotting. And secondly, and probably obviously, human heads kind of hold a very important part of our body, our brain. And without it, humans will not function. Eating, drinking, and breathing are all impossible without the head. But cockroaches, on the other hand, don't need their heads to breathe, as they do this process through little holes located on their bodies, called spiracles. Although a headless cockroach will die of starvation eventually, it's gonna take them weeks for them to do so. Number 9. Bees. This might sound like a cop-out to you. No, bees die and they stay dead. However, there is a reason why they appear on this list, because even though a bee might be dead, it can still sting you. Not in the way that you think, of course. Dead bees obviously can't go flying around and actively sting you. It's that their stinging parts, and more importantly, the venom delivery system will still work even if the bee is long dead. When a bee stings, the sting detaches from its body, leaving it embedded into the skin of its victim. Attached to the sting is a tiny organ that both contains the bee venom and a tiny muscle that pumps the venom out. Due to the simple physiology of bees, these actions are not controlled by the bee's simple brain, but rather by involuntary impulses. So if you think that you're safe picking up a dead bee, think again. Number 8. Chickens. There is truth to the expression running around like a headless chicken, after all. Yeah, ask any farmer and they'll tell you, chickens can still run around with their heads cut off. And there's a very simple reason for this, and it's not because chickens are zombies. No, the reason is, believe it or not, human error. This error happens to be a butcher's error, to be more specific. You see, a chicken's central nervous system is very different from us humans. Some basic bodily functions are controlled not by the brain itself, but by certain parts of the brain's stem. So, what does this all mean? Well, the butcher chomps the chicken's head to high, most of the time it's just the forebrain of the chicken that comes off with its head, leaving the brain stem and the cerebellum quite intact. In fact, if the butcher also misses the jugular, not only will the chicken continue to move, it sometimes can still breathe. Of course, it eventually starves to death, but there is one special case that a chicken survived 18 whole months without its head. Number 7. The Octopus. I'm pretty sure that you've seen videos online where an octopus after being chopped up continues to move. In fact, in certain Asian countries, eating fresh octopus is a deadly delicacy. It's not really the octopus that survives after being chopped up, but rather their eight wily arms that continue to move about. And it's these eight arms that usually get stuck in someone's throat, resulting into a very bad day. The reason why octopus's arms maintain mobility even after being chopped off is quite fascinating. It's because their central nervous system is quite unique. You see, most of an octopus's nerve cells, two out of three of them in fact, can be found not in the brain where you would expect them to be, but rather in its tentacles. And these arms can continue reacting to stimuli even if they are no longer connected to the main brain. In fact, they remain responsive even after the octopus has been long dead and the arms suffered. Researchers in St. George University in London conducted extensive experiments on this phenomenon. After the animals were euthanized, their arms were removed and kept in chilled seawater for up to an hour until they were ready for experimentation. Some arms were suspended vertically, and others were laid out horizontally. They then pinched them. The suspended arms recoiled from the unpleasant stimulus by shortening and curling in a corkscrew shape within one second. Horizontal arms also moved away from the undesirable stimuli, many bending in a sort of contrived joint toward the top. These movements can happen up for a week after the octopus's death. Number 6. Salamanders. If you're gonna come up with a list of animals that stubbornly continue to live even after apparent death, you'll be hard-pressed not to include the salamander. 
This animal has always been synonymous to long life and immortality. It's even revered by people who believe in magic, believing that the amazing regenerative powers of this animal can be considered paranormal. Salamanders have the uncanny ability to regenerate any part of its body that has been chopped off. More amazingly, these regrown parts actually function the same as, or in some cases, even better than the original parts. This is mainly because of a special protein found in salamanders, which facilitates the replication of cells. This protein can also be found in humans, but in smaller quantities, and they help us heal from our wounds. So does this mean that we can soon regenerate severed limbs? Well, we're not quite there yet. But scientists are continuing to study salamanders and how their unique ability can benefit humans in the future. Number 5. Frogs It has been discovered that frogs continue to move around even when they're brain dead. Or to put it more accurately, with its brain missing. This experiment was brought about when scientists discovered reports of various headless animals continuing to move about. That's very impressive on its own, but let's face it, there's only so much any creature without a head can do. So what happens if you leave the frog's head intact, but take out its brain, you ask? Well, thanks to the let's chop out its brain and see what the hell happens approach to science taken by 19th century neurologist David Ferrier, we can tell you. A headed but brainless frog actually behaves very similarly to a frog with its gray matter perfectly intact. If you turn it upside down, it will ride itself. If you pinch its feet, it will hop away. If you put it in water, it will swim to the side and climb out. And perhaps most disturbing of all, it will even croak contentedly if you stroke its back. The factor that results in frogs' zombie-like tendencies is the power of the reflex reaction, which fires the necessary electrical impulses that cause a muscle to expand or contract. Number 4. Flies You've probably seen David Blaine resurrect dead flies just by touching them, and no, this is not because the magician really has supernatural powers. Flies can survive freezing temperatures and go into some kind of suspended animation. What you really see David doing is thawing the frozen fly using his own body heat. When the insect fully thaws, the fly then flies away. But this amazing ability to survive freezing temperatures is not why the humble fly makes it to this list. Female flies will live for several days after they have been decapitated. Such beheaded females assume an upright stance comparable to that of a normal fly, and can do and engage in complex actions such as preening, flying, and under duress, walking. Even more amazingly, males will court decapitated females. That's right, chop off a female fly's head and not much changes, really. If anything, it serves to make the fly's behavior more human-like. The males still want to have sex with her, while she in turn treats their sexual advances as noxious foreign stimuli. Number 3. Turtles The hearts of fish, reptiles, birds, and mammals alike have their own pacemaker cells that take over when the signals from the brainstem are not coming through for some reason which ensures that the heart still functions for a while, even when the brain does not. Now the turtle takes the term for a while to a whole new level, and this is because from their heart's viewpoint, being cut off from the oxygen and nutrients usually supplied by the blood is just a normal day at the office. Because these animals can dive for a long time. How long? Well, try 5,000 hours in the case of the loggerhead musk turtle. Yeah, you heard that right. That was a five followed by three zeros and they survived that long by what oxygen they can take up from the water via their skin, throat, and butt end, as well as their body's amazing potential for producing energy without oxygen. Their hearts have their own fuel stash and they just won't give up until every last fill up of that has been used up. Today we're going to focus on an animal so ferocious it can still kill you with its head chopped off. Perfect for Halloween, honestly. Number two. Snakes. People's reaction when faced with a highly venomous snake can be boiled down into three categories. Running away, freezing on the spot, and oh god, kill it. Chop its head off. While indeed chopping the thing's head off may seem the most feasible way to avoid getting bitten, the truth is that that may not be the case. A snake's head, a vessel for its fangs and deadly poison sacs, still have the ability to bite you and deliver deadly venom, even if it's no longer attached to the rest of its body. The snake has heat-sensitive pits at either side of its face, which it uses to detect threats. And let's face it, if you're close enough for your body heat to be detected, you're close enough to be considered a threat. These heat-sensitive pits are capable of detecting a threatening presence for hours after death, which means the snake may continue to defend itself, zombie style. And yes, this even applies if the body is no longer attached. I saved the best for last, but first, I have a quick challenge that takes only 5 seconds to complete. If you can leave a like and subscribe within the next 5 seconds, you'll get 10 years of amazing luck. Just try it, it really works. Number 1. Flatworms 
Are you familiar with the old wives' tale about how earthworms reproduce? It states that if you cut an earthworm in half, two earthworms will form from the severed halves. Of course, this has since been proven to be completely hokum. However, substitute the earthworm with a flatworm, and then this old wives' tale suddenly becomes a very true disturbing story. Flatworms, or planarians, are known as masters of regeneration. They can rebuild any part of their bodies after amputation. If one is cut in half, the head portion grows a tail, and the tail portion grows a head. Cut it into 20 pieces and 20 new worms, each an exact copy of the first, are created. This has been exploited by Nottingham University scientists who have created a colony of more than 20,000 worms. And guess what? They're all from one original, whose bodies and organs do not appear to age. They are confident a single worm which did not divide would live forever, unless it catches an infection or another illness. Which deathless animal is your favorite? Let us know in the comments section down below. Want more videos that would probably still exist until the end of time? Click on any of the videos you see on the screen. As always, thanks for watching everybody and you all have a good weekend.